Hi, I'm George Nordhaus, and welcome to Monday Morning. We're taking a step up, I guess, in the uh, uh, in, in the scheme of things here. When you talk about uh, enterprise risk management, then that's what we're going to talk about today and what it can do for you. I've heard that terminology a lot, and I've seen other people. I know, I know a lot of agents live, die with that, but I think there's a whole bunch of people that really don't understand it. Donna Gaylor is, uh, is the... Uh, person who's going to present this. She's written books. Well, I'll tell you. Let me tell you about her. Uh, let's go over to uh, so we can show you Donna's picture here. And uh, I will uh, tell you, she was a, is a consultant right now, but she was with Zurich uh, for a long time. Well, she was a chub too, but in Zurich, she had uh, 17 years and then she was uh, ran the worldwide general insurance business. It was only $36 billion. Bad business, and only thirty-six billion. That's not too bad. But uh, at any rate, uh, then she started with Kremen Forster, of course, and I said Chubb, then Kremen Forster. But uh, it was a very good uh, background because she really understood it and got it to hear it all about it. And she saw something I guess the rest of us didn't see so fast, and that's all about enterprise risk management. She's got a book. I'll tell you. We'll tell you about that a little bit later. Um, but uh, she, how's, she's one of the top 100 insurance women business insurance back a few years ago. That wasn't all bad. Donna, let's talk about, I don't know what that thing is doing there. You get that off there. Uh, let's talk about uh, enterprise risk management. I know a lot of people have heard the terminology, but how about you giving a definition of it, if you will? Okay. George, I would be happy to, um, absolutely. Let's start with a really basic definition that um, is that enterprise risk management is a process, it's a business process like many other business processes such as management by objectives or your budgeting process. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to better ensure that the organization will meet its strategic goals and objectives how? By identifying the risks that might impede that goal achievement. Right. And that's both insurable and non-insurable risks. Mm -hmm. All right. That's and then good. once you've identified the risks in an ERM process, then you have to quantify them, prioritize them, and then the most significant ones get reported upward and they get addressed with mitigation action plans, which are continuously monitored just like any other action plan that uh, that the organization might have um, for any of its processes. Well, let me ask you something, Donna. What's the difference between ERM, Enterprise Risk Management, and Risk Management? I, I'm glad you asked that, George, because um, there are some differences. The first one is that um, in the past, risk management departments were primarily focused on insurable risk. But today, a chief risk officer is just as worried about um, whether or not customers' buying habits are changing or that a new technology will disrupt um, the, the marketplace and um, have an impact on a company's product line. Um, so they are just, again, as interested in strategic risks like the ones I just mentioned, mm -hmm. as they are about the day-to-day -day risk. The other thing is, in enterprise risk management, um, things are not quite as siloed. There's usually a risk management committee that's comprised of the top people and all of the functions in the organization, and they're working together to try to find um, what the key risks are to the organization. And they also, through that effort, find correlated risks, which have often been neglected in a siloed approach. And the third thing is, um, the third really big difference is that um, with enterprise risk management today, there are very clear standards and frameworks to follow, and that wasn't always the case with risk management in the past. Oh, well, now, is this for, uh, I got it now, but is this uh, primarily for big, big businesses, or, or can, is it enterprise risk management work for medium size or even small businesses? Uh, again, I'm very glad you asked that question because I think, you know, in up until now, it has been viewed as something that the large organizations, especially the large global organizations, need to do this. Um, but um, that is changing. I think middle size and even small businesses are beginning to realize the power in identifying their risks 
early enough so that you can take corrective action and good. avoid good. serious problems to your business. Good, good, good. All right, let's 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 talk about it. Tell me about it. Well, how, how important ERM is, um, you know, is part of, um, you know, this whole discussion of its migration from large to smaller companies. Um, data was recently collected by the American um, Institute for Certified Public Accountants and North Carolina State University. Um, and what that um, response from 1,093 surveys told them was that 68% of the boards of directors are asking for um, senior executive involvement to be somewhat or extensively increased. So um, we, we know that boards of directors, um, senior management is very, very interested in making sure that ERM is practiced in the organization. And very recently, the National Association of Insurance Commissioners have called for ERM uh, through something called ORSA, the Own Risk and Solvency Assessment huh. uh, Mandate that has come out from the NAIC. They adopted a model law in 2012. They issued their guidance manual in 2013, and the effective date was this year, January 1st, 2015. Uh -huh. And um, this new requirement is uh, intended to foster enterprise risk management in insurance companies. Now, this is this particular piece of, of uh, requirement um, or regulation it has to do with insurance companies, but um, I think it's a predictor or a bellwether uh, for what we'll expect to see in other industries. So um, it does, again, intend for insurance companies to have effective risk, enterprise risk management programs. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it's also geared to make sure that um, there's a good view of the um, on, on risk overall and the capital situation of those companies. And it is required of companies with um, gross written premium over $500 mil million and um, a group, if it's a group uh, holding company, over a billion and uh, some other ent entities if they're in, in financial distress. So um, ORSA is alive and well in almost, uh, I think it's in 45 of the 50 states, and uh, those reports will be very soon sent in to um, the state commissioner's um, offices for review. That's going to be interesting, <laughs> for sure. First time around, it's going to be wild, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. There's, um, you know, people are scrambling to I get their yeah. ORSA reports. Yeah. It takes a while. <laughs> but one, one more survey I'd like to share with you, and uh -huh. that is um, the RIMS 2013 Enterprise Risk Management Survey, which was designed to gain insight on the current state of ERM. In this case, um, uh, 1,000 risk professionals were polled. Um, in the other, it was uh, the first one I showed you, it was mostly um, folks from the finance function that answered that survey. Mm -hmm. This one was risk professionals. And what they're saying is that uh, ERM has gained critical mass. 63% of the respondents either have full or partially integrated ERM in their organization. So, wow. Um, wow, wow, wow. you know, you, this is this – is, Grow, it has grown, it is growing, and I think it's inevitable that, again, it will seep down from the very large organizations to the mid-sized organizations to the small organizations. Right. Fascinating. Anyhow, so where do we yeah, go from here now? Well, I, I would like to just say that, you know, for all size organizations, um, one of the things that is important to do, I think, in um, helping them to consider ERM for their organization is to debunk some of the criticisms that have been out there. It's natural with any relatively new business process. There are going to be people who are naysayers. There are going to be people who only find the negatives. Or there are going to be people who are just very practical. And so they are going to be looking at both sides of the coin. And so one of the criticisms that has been leveled at ERM is that, well, you know, it, it's not perfect. 
Um, ERM can't identify and protect against all the significant risks or uncertainties in the, in the business. Well, yes, that <laughs> happens to be true, but I mean, it's kind of a bogus argument in that, you know, if an organization, you know, was able to, let's say, put in a new business process that would um, improve their uh, overdue receivables and uncollectibles by 90%, not 100%, but only by 90%, would they not put that process in? You know, if, if, if they could have a process that enabled them to forecast their profit and loss for the year and make it 90% better but not 100% better, wouldn't they do it? Sure. So the fact that ERM can't always identify every single risk to the organization. It's far better to have identified um, a significantly higher number than not to have, have identified any or most. So I think that that's a bogus argument. Um, another um, criticism of ERM has been that ERM focuses on the negative rather than the positive. Well, you know, think about it. What could be more positive than a process that has as its objective to help an organization meet its strategic mission and goals and objectives. I mean, it has a positive, forward-looking um, trajectory, or you know that it, it's there for a reason that's very positive, not negative. Is there an upside to risk too? Yes, and sometimes there can be an upside to risk. Think about a company that. Um, notices a risk that's evolving, maybe it's a regulatory risk that will impact their product and they redesign that product in advance of the regulatory change um, and that product becomes a wildly successful bestseller for them. Well, that's the positive side of risk. So I don't, I don't think, again, that that critique that ERM is negative Mm -hmm. um, is is really an honest one. Hmm. And the third um, criticism that has been leveled at ERM is that it's too expensive. And George, really, I've talked to many, many um, chief risk officers. Most of them are individual contributors. They don't have any staff at all, or they have a very, very small staff. They work closely with the um, the risk management department that, that was in place before who, or whomever was doing risk management before. Mm -hmm. um, yes, there is some cost involved in going through an enterprise-wide identification of risk, but that expense, uh, again, at the end of the day, is, is one that should have a payback to the company that's far in, in excess of the expense. So the fact is that ERM is generally not too expensive if you look at it against the value that it brings. Yeah, you can see it immediately. I, it's just uh, very positive. What I like about it is what it's going to do for independent agents. Let's talk about that. All right. Okay, well, sure. Um, there are two ways to look at it in terms of why agencies, agencies should be interested in ERM. First way to look at it is... Um, let me just go back here. Okay. One way to look at it is that, you know, it can help um, the agency itself. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and so it can help them ensure their own profitability and perpetuation. If they adopt it internally, um, they can manage their own risks better. They can show their clients, carriers, bankers, investors, that they are actively managing the uncertainties in their business in a professional way. Mm -hmm. So that's one reason they should be interested. The other reason is because it can enhance their value proposition to their own clients and can help them differentiate themselves. Because if they are consulting with clients about all their risks, both those that can be covered by insurance mm -hmm. and cannot be covered by insurance, they're offering a better overall insurance solution for their for their clients. It seems to and me, it, excuse me, Don, I was just going to say it seems to me that uh, 
that enterprise risk management is such a wonderful tool for agencies to use against the, I will say the direct riders, uh, the direct sellers, uh, the people who are selling online. I mean, this is so much, I mean, they can't do it. Those people can't do it. They have to have the human beings to do it. So I, I think this is a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, tool. You know, you said that too, didn't you? Yeah, for the agents. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, through, well, we're going to see in a minute how through this process, it might lead the agency to better explore other aspects of a solution for that customer and, and sell other lines of business to that same customer. Okay. But first, let's look at the um, agency doing their own ERM. So, for example, we know that um, in today's world, if we looked at this at a macro level, um, most agencies will identify such risks as talent gaps. It's very difficult to find talent today. Um, and then they would next prioritize how that risk affects them, and then they would manage it. And I like to use the um, acronym ERTA. How are they going to either eliminate, avoid, reduce, transfer, or accept that risk? Another macro risk that agencies are facing is um, competition, whether it's direct sales, internet sales, um, you know, Competition is shrinking agency market share in many cases. So how significant is that risk for a particular agent, and how are they going to um, address that risk, either eliminate it, avoid it, reduce it, transfer it? Um, if they accept the risk, what can they do in terms of innovation, differentiation, diversification, and cross-selling to make up for that risk or to address that risk? No, it's so, not, um, you're, you're yeah. saying that, uh, that this is for an agency if it's doing its ERM on the agency itself. On the agency itself. I see. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Got it. So, um, <clears throat> you know, that's kind of, I tried to take a look at what are some of the macro issues that agencies are, uh, or macro risks that uh -huh. agencies are facing today. And then the next slide, I've tried to just take a look at um, some of the, the um, more specific risks that a um, individual uh -huh. agency might face. So, you know, as agency X in um, Duluth, Georgia, may be facing different risks than an agency in Columbus, Ohio. So, mm -hmm. what are those risks? Mm -hmm. um, and so, just again, um, hypothetically, it may be the business demographics are changing in the territory that that agent covers. How, then how significant is that risk, and what are they going to do to address that risk? So if an agency goes through this process that I'm talking about, identifying their risks, prioritizing them, and then figuring out how are they going to manage that risk, mm -hmm. they will become a stronger agency. Um, and uh, it, it, also, it gives them the opportunity, again, when they're talking to any of the stakeholders that they deal with, whether it's a, a customer, a banker, um, whomever, someone who maybe wants to invest in the agency or get, or get involved in the agency, they can say, look, we've gone through this process. We know what our risks are, yeah. and we have specific <laughs> mitigation plans to address those risks. Donna, is there anybody that, that teaches this uh, ERM for agencies to do for themselves? Well, um, you know, that is that is something that that you know I have tried to do through um, the publishing of my of my books. It's uh -huh. something that I'm good um, able to do with with my partner um, Al Decker, and um, I'm also associated with Hanover Stone um, Solutions, which is focused on creating um, or helping insurance companies. Uh, implement their ERM. Mm -hmm. So um, there are a lot of people in this field, actually, uh, teaching teaching the how-to of ERM. I see. Didn't know it. I'm learning. Yes. Okay. So now I guess you would like me to switch gears a little bit and talk about how an agency can work with their clients. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think that you know by taking a holistic view of risk, a client can realize the need for additional covers that haven't always been considered in the past. 
So if an agency is helping the, the client or even just simply staying aware of what the client's ERM efforts are, then it becomes an opportunity to offer additional product lines that the client may now want. They didn't maybe realize they had a need for it before they implemented the ERM, but after that, they suddenly realize, I need more than a plain vanilla bop, mm -hmm. or I need more than, um, you know, the basic property casualty covers that I was getting before. So, um, you know, how how can an agent get involved? Well, they can get involved with the client's ERM on a con consulting basis. Now that one, you know, requires obviously um, expertise. It requires maybe some specialized talent in the agency. It comes with some li potential liabilities. And so I can understand that some agents will want to develop that expertise and some won't. But if they don't want to actually become a consultant to the client on ERM, perhaps they can just attend a, a client's ERM meeting so they can hear what's going on and and um, in network and, and within within the um, client's company. Maybe they come and speak at a client's ERM meeting about some particular topic that um, the client would like them to address. Because again, ERM is both about insurable and non-insurable risks. And certainly they can ask questions about the client's ERM efforts during the application stage or uh, renewal stage of, of dealing with the client. So there are many ways that the, that the agency can, can get involved with the client, but the outcome that I'm predicting could happen uh, from working with the client on ERM is that you know a lot of additional policies might come into play. Mm -hmm. For example, um, you know product recall. Maybe maybe the client in their ERM discussions within their own company suddenly realized, wow, um, you know retailer X down the street who is very similar to us just just got sued. Um, or and involved in a product recall situation, maybe we sh you know we never thought we were we were liable, but maybe we ought to take note of that, and maybe we ought to protect ourselves with a product recall policy mm -hmm. that you know as you know covers um, reimbursement for financial loss and um, and has you know many other uh, features including you know litigation expense, maybe. Um, Maybe that client during the ERM discussions realizes that you know some significant piece of equipment they have has gone off warranty, and maybe that um, creates a discussion around maybe we should be getting equipment breakdown um, insurance, or maybe um, they've just added a new piece of equipment that they never had before, and um, through the ERM discussions they realize this is something that maybe we should be looking into. So um, maybe they haven't bought a cyber policy yet, but again, through the ERM discussion, uh, maybe they even waited for the ERM discussion before they were going to make a decision about buying a cyber policy. But through the ERM discussion, they make the decision, hey, we really need to have this covered. Um, Employment practices liability. You know, this is really a hot area right now, and um, and you know the awards and the and the and the costs can uh -huh. be quite significant. And uh, very often, this is the kind of thing that would come out in the ERM discussion about, you know, what are our risks relative to discrimination and um, all the many many regulations that have come out in regard to um, of discrimination of all sorts. Mm -hmm. So um, environmental policies, another good one that a lot of mid-sized and small companies have not bought, but they may have processes. 
that involve pollutants, and they really should have that cover. But once they go through that in-depth ERM discussion about what are my risks, suddenly it becomes very clear that these policies, um, or these covers, are very necessary. What if they've just become more globalized and they're dealing with um, countries all over the map and, um, you know, there's a lot of instability in the world today. They probably need a trade credit policy. Um, but until they have that ERM discussion, maybe they've never thought of that. Um, and other possibilities run the gamut from inland marine to supply chain, excess casualty, E&O, D&O, reputational covers. I just, you know, read this morning about the Steel Rees new reputational cover that's out there. They're offering it huh. in conjunction with one of the Lloyd syndicates. So now there, there, is, <laughs> there is a product for reputation, um, employee benefits. So actually, um, just to sum up, George, I, we, I really believe that um, if an agent's client gets involved with looking at all of their risks, they will likely come up with a need to have some covers that they've never bought before. I suspect that's right, and I think that uh, I was. I, I think a lot of uh, agencies over the years, uh, agents over the years, uh, kind of would go through all that to see, but they never really went to the uh, until the ERM came along. To, in my knowledge, and I, uh, they never really went to the to the business and looked at the other aspects of the business. That's, I mean, they looked at the, what are we insured, but they never looked, well, if, I don't know if I'm saying that right because I never got into that, but, uh, but you know, all of a sudden ERM popped up and I, I, it, now I understand it, I think. And I think that's, don't you think it's awfully important that they, they're looking at a lot of other things uh, uh, that you've talked about uh, that really aren't insurable maybe or something, but but they need to know all these things. I don't know. I, it's it's just a, it's just a, the possibilities are endless on the thing. I'm impressed. Well, well, it is, and that does scare some people, you know. But the point is not to try to boil the ocean. It is important for anyone who's practicing ERM. I this is just I think a really important point to make. Who whoever is practicing ERM, you can't try to think of every small, tiny potential risk that's out there, you, you, will, you will drive yourself crazy and you will waste the company's money. But you need to be able to look at the significant ones, all of the significant ones, whether they're insurable or not. But, but keep it significant. I agree. And that's, now let's talk about uh, your, your, your book, your new one. Uh, that's just kind of coming out. It's not out yet, is it? Let me see the... Uh... Right, it it should it will be out next month. Oh, good, uh, just good. Saw the last, just saw the last galleys. It's called Enterprise Risk Management: Straight to the Value, and this is uh, a book that is for practitioners of ERM to help them um, identify how they are adding value, how ERM is adding value to the organization, so that they can, if you know, if they're getting that question from their CEO, CEO or their board or from some other stakeholder, they'll be able to answer the question how it's bringing value to the organization. Will this book be on Amazon only on Kindle type thing, or is it going to be a, a printed? It, it, it will be on Amazon as a soft cover, a hard copy soft cover, uh -huh. um, and it will also be available electronically. I'll be darn. That's great. This has been needed so long. Well, Donna, I want to thank you very much. It's just a, it's, it's enlightening for us, and I know you did another, another one previous to this for us and I hope that in, in a few months we'll do some more and then when the book comes out we can you can tell me what are they finding what's good what's bad and what's indifferent we'll do it again how's that sounds great George uh, pleasure, yeah. pleasure doing this with uh, you yeah it is really fun for the rest of you well we'll see you next Monday morning <laughs>